Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about QL control. This video is recorded for University of Rochester's Graduate Billiards Association for a series where we try to answer questions that people outside the game of pool might have about the discipline. Therefore, if you are an advanced player, then the knowledge in here is likely to be obvious to you. If you are new to the game of pool, then I hope you learned something interesting. We will talk about the skill of QL control which is critical once you reach an advanced uh, level. The point is that it allows you to put long sequences of balls without having to play a difficult shot. For example, on next brown seven, I will try to play the position in such a way that uh, my next shot on ball number eight will be relatively easy. Same is the case for the position on ball number 8 to ball number 9. And after ball number 9, we will jump to the explanation on how is it done. This video is arranged in such a way that we will consider multiple setups of free balls. The QL in here, hopefully I'll be able to mark it, pretty ugly mark, cue ball, object ball, and the final eight ball. We will vary the positions of these three balls and we will pot, try to pot the object ball and obtain the position of the cue ball for the final eight. For this particular shot, we observed that it would be comfortable to shoot the eight ball if the cue ball is somewhere within this position. Therefore, the idea can be is simply to roll the cue ball forward after the impact with ball number 13. To achieve such action, we need to make the cue ball roll forward after the impact, and uh, to do it, we need a particular spin on the cue ball. To apply the spin on the cue ball, we need to shoot it at a correct point. In fact, for this shot, we'll sh I will shoot the top part of the cue ball which will result in applying topspin. As you can see, cue ball was taken for a comfortable position for ball number 8. For an easy way. For the next setup, uh, the position of ball number 8 was changed in the sense that the ball number 8 is now closer to the center pocket and now it is convenient to make the cue ball stop after potting the 13. To make the cue ball stop, we need to make it slide as it uh, cannons ball number 13 and to make it slide, we hit the cue ball slightly below the equator. The final shot is slightly more tricky in the sense that ball number 8 is on the top part of the table and it would be comfortable to pot it uh, if the cue ball was uh, somewhere within this area. To take the cue ball to this area, we need to apply the backspin or a draw or a screw. There are different names for it. And to apply backspin, we need to hit the cue ball below the equator. Let's observe in a little bit more detail what happens with the cue ball as it uh, cannons the object ball. In this particular case, to achieve a stop, we need to hit the cue ball be uh, slightly below the equator to make it slide as it hits the 14, which results in a stop shot. For the next shot to apply topspin, we hit the cue ball above the equator. To apply backspin, we hit the cue ball below the equator. The 
Now let's consider the effect of the spin on the cue ball when we play shots with a little bit uh, more angle. In the sense that the shots right now are not straight in, there is an angle, um, and therefore the cue ball will not travel only in a straight line. When I hit the cue ball with a spin that would normally result in a stop, then the cue ball roll goes roughly along a 90 degree line. When I hit the cue ball with top spin, then the cue ball goes to the right hand side. And as I will play the cue ball with back spin, then it will come back to me to the left hand side of the table again at some angle. And it should be noted that to achieve an in-between effect uh, for these particular shots, that is if I wanted to hit uh, somewhere along this cushion, then what I can do is to hit the cue ball simply in the in-between points over here. It should be noted that uh, uh, striking the cue ball below center is not enough to achieve a draw action. In fact, uh, what it does is that it applies the draw action on the cue ball as the cue hits the cue ball. However, this action needs to be maintained as the cue ball hits the object ball. In fact, there is a little bit of distance between the two balls and there will be also friction acting between the cue ball and the object ball. And uh, this friction might result in losing the draw action if you don't play it right. As you can see, I have hit the cue ball below center and yet no draw action was achieved. As you can see, the friction between the cloth and the cue ball resulted in the cue ball in losing the draw action. To compensate for that effect, we need to hit the cue ball with a little bit more pace. In fact, uh, this is a slightly more complicated shot. So therefore, for this particular setup, we would try like to have the cue ball roughly within this position for the next spot on the eight ball, and uh, we will try to get a better draw action right now. The shot that you can see is in fact quite uh, challenging. The draw, long draw shots uh, require uh, decent technique. As you can see, with increasing the pace, the draw action was not lost uh, as the key will travel towards the object ball. Now we will consider an unusual shot. It is a drag shot and it uses the fact that uh, the cue ball loses its spin along the way to the object ball. Therefore, what happens right now is that uh, for the next shot on ball number eight, we would like to hold the cue ball somewhere within this area for a convenient shot. However, what you cannot see from this camera angle is that the angle on ball number 13 Takes, me, takes the cue ball somewhere like this, and we cannot modify this angle that much depending on whether to, we play the cue ball with topspin or backspin. We can try to reduce the pace of the shot uh, that, is, that would hold the cue ball somewhere within this area, however, then slight imperfection of the table might result in us, uh, well, it might result uh, in the cue ball drifting and us missing the shot. What can be done is uh, that we can strike the cue ball below center and as the cue ball will lose its backspin, it will also lose the pace. Therefore, we can strike the cue ball with confidence to, and, uh, and uh, we can achieve an effect that uh, would be achieved with, a, with a, a soft shot. In other words, with a confident shot, we have achieved something that we would have achieved with a soft shot and we have avoided uh, potential errors. To observe what's going on, uh, consider this slow motion video, we apply backspin. The backspin is lost, but also the pace is lost and the little pace that is remaining of the cable results in holding it for position on ball number eight. Uh, within 
the previous videos, we have considered uh, hitting the cue wall only on the vertical axis. Right now, we will add the horizontal axis on the cue wall. What it does is that uh, it uh, changes the behavior of the cue wall as it rebounds off the cushion. This is the critical effect that we want to achieve. And really, applying side spin, the main purpose of it is to change the behavior of the cue wall, as I mentioned, when it hits the cushion. Now I'm hitting to the right, and uh, the cue wall also went to my right. As I will hit with the left spin, the cue wall will go towards my left. We can use this particular shot to modify the rebound angle as the cue wall hits the cache. So for example, for the next shot, uh, if I try to just screw the cue wall with bottom, then the cue wall would go somewhere towards this diamond and then travel for into this area. In fact, this shot is rather uncomfortable to us since ball number eight is over there and uh, from this position of the cue ball, we would obtain a rather uncomfortable shot. What we can do is that we can apply a little bit of left on the cue ball to change the rebound angle of the cue ball as it hits the left cushion and that will take the cue ball towards the top part of the table. This 8-ball is not an easy shot, but it is way more comfortable uh, than the shot if we were left on the bottom of the table. Therefore, the side spin helped us to achieve a more comfortable shot. There is some risk related to striking the cue ball uh, with deep spin and that risk is a miscue. In fact, uh, if we go too close towards the edge of the cue ball or if we have imperfect technique of, or if we choke the cue in the wrong way, then our shot might be not clean, as you can see with this failed shot. The second example is uh, a rather simple setup. We have the eight ball over here, therefore, it would be rather comfortable to position the cue ball somewhere to this area of the table that I marked with this ugly circle. To do it, we apply a little bit of left spin to take the cue ball off the cushion later to the right hand side of the table. Again, we use the side spin to modify the rebound angle of the bottom cushion and that later uh, took us uh, for a position for a comfortable pot. The third example uh, includes the 8-ball in slightly different position in the sense that right now the 8-ball is on the top part of the table. To have a comfortable pot, we want to have the cue ball somewhere within this area and now we will take the cue ball for a trip in the sense that after the rebound of the cushion, we will change the angle of the cue ball to make it travel towards the left cushion, then we will make it travel into the area of the shot. Again, we use the right spin in this particular case to change the rebound angle of the bottom cache. The final shot in this video is a useful little shot. Uh, in this particular case, the angle on the 13 takes the cue ball uh, somewhere along this line. So it's still a makeable pot on ball number eight. However, it can become slightly tricky and it's not necessary when we, have, uh, uh, when we are under pressure and we want to win the game. What we can do is that after hitting the cushion, we can change the rebound angle of right spin and make the cue ball come back along this line. We do it by applying a little bit of right spin on the cue ball. Let's, 
let me come back to to make this effect more clear. In fact, as you can see, the cable is spinning as it hits the right cushion and that spin later changes the rebound angle and takes the cable towards ball number eight. I hope this video was interesting to you. Take care.